There are many characters in anime out there that left their mark over the years for many reasons. For today, we will be talking about the top 10 anime with cold main characters. So, before we start, be sure to hit the subscribe button and press on that bell icon and set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. And it comes without saying, beware of the following spoilers. Coming in at number 10 is Kiz Niver. This character definitely earned this place on this list as one of the most cold anime characters out there. He barely has or expresses any kind of feelings. Whether it was emotional feelings or physical feelings, this guy here refuses to feel anything. He just decided to wake up one day, say screw this, and shut the whole world off from himself. He is the perfect subject to use in the Kisniver experiment. This experiment links the feelings and physical trauma of five people together, meaning if someone feels pain in his leg, the other four will as well. And even then he just remains calm, cold, and collected, and sometimes distant. Coming in at number 9 is Goblin Slayer. I mean, come on guys, you can't really think I would make a list about the coldest people in anime without mentioning this guy here, right? This man is colder than the Arctic and has only one thing on his mind, killing goblins. If you even think about the most words he uses is goblins. He is just obsessed with them and wants to completely eradicate them off the face of the earth. You know, it's kind of funny now, I noticed that the most badass and cold characters have white hair. I can't believe it's the first time I noticed this in all my years of watching anime, but uh, Goblin Slayer is such a mysterious character we didn't even get to know what his name is. The only thing we do know, or rather we got to see about him, is his body with a hell of a lot of scars. And he has, well, white hair. I really wish for the upcoming seasons to elaborate more on his past and identity a little bit more. Coming in at number 8 is Codebreaker. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and evil for evil. This guy doesn't give two craps about anyone that comes up against him. He has an amazing ability that allows him to release blue flames from his hand and scorch anyone that commits evil without leaving a trace. His powers, his suit, his unforgiving personality, and unwavering sense of righteous justice. While Ray is in the park scorching some thugs for killing a dog, he is witnessed by a girl that is coincidentally in his same school. So, Ray ends up burning her too to cover his tracks. The interesting thing is, however, the next day when he went to school, the girl was still there, alive and well. Surprise. Well, I guess I did my part here and gave a reason to watch the show and find out what exactly is going on, and just how did she survive when the thugs didn't? I mean, really, what could be better than that? This guy has an instant barbecue cooker right at the tips of his fingers. Once upon a time, he had a code, but now he is bound by nothing and is limited by no one. Ray has no fears and can't be phased by anything whatsoever. Oh, and uh, did I mention with one glance he can scare the living shit out of you? Coming in at number 7 is Tokyo Gold. Oh look, another white-haired character. Well, he wasn't always white-haired, but we all know what made him the way he is. For those who don't, I'll give a small hint. 1000 minus 7. Tokyo Goal readers and watchers are already sitting in the corner and shaking from the PTSD. For those who don't know, this is practically the torture Kaneki was subjected to by Jack. He was beat up, torn, fingers cut, insects pushed into his ears, and blood drained from him. The torture was unbelievable, and it broke Kaneki beyond repair, changing him forever. Kaneki then transformed into a powerful beast that doesn't play around, and kills in the coldest, most painful ways, to the point he made Jack his own torturer scream in agony as he devoured him. At number 6 is 91 Days. This is one of the coolest anime out there when it comes to stories and tales of revenge. Angelo's family was all slaughtered, all but him, by the Vanita Mafia family mercilessly. However, as a child, while escaping, Nero spared his life and didn't kill him for that reason. However, he made the biggest mistake in his life by sparing him without knowing that this man is on the course that will end the Vanetti family for good. Except for Nero, of course. This Journey of Angelos is one of the coolest Mafia stories in anime I have watched and deserves to be checked out. Angelo plays them all for fools and leads them one by one to their deaths without them noticing. Coming at number 5 is Doro Hedoro. Kaiman is the lead character of the manga. He appears to be the victim of a magic user who laid a curse on his head. That's all he remembers and nothing else about his previous life. The only thing that's reptile-like about him was his head and that's it. The anime is set in a gritty world of hellish design and magic powers and users. After waking up in this form and with no previous memories whatsoever, this guy will go to any length and cross any line in order to find out who he just truly is and what exactly happened to him. 
I mean, sure, I could tell you why he was eating someone's face off in the first episode and who he truly is, but where's the fun in that, no? The anime is quite fun, and even though it is in CGI, which might annoy some of the watchers, it's still a great series, with one hell of a complicated story that will grab anyone's interest if he enjoys magic, mystery, and gore. Coming in at number 4 is Darker Than Black. This man goes by many names and has worked with many secret organizations over his lifespan. He is a powerful contractor that is only compared to sudden death. Anyone that even sees Haze Mask is a dead man. No one can escape this man or outrun him. If he is told to assassinate you, even if you hide in the deepest caves under the surface of the earth, with the highest defense and security systems and a personal army to protect you, he will kill everyone and find you. This man is no joke, and even though he is powerful, he is just a man. But this man is very good at what he does, and what he does best is killing. He is a powerful contractor with electric abilities, and even though some might argue that in this world there are many powerful contractors that can beat him, especially when it comes to sheer force, I argue that with his experience, finesse, and tactics, no one, absolutely no one, is able to defeat Hay if that really even is his name. Coming in at number 3 is Helsing Ultimate. Alucard is one of the most terrifying sons of bitches to ever live and exist in anime history, and I dare say he is even more terrifying than Guts himself. I mean, have you even seen this guy when he is on a killing spree? And what is even worse than all that is his freaking final form. His true form. He summons the army of the dead, puts on his armor, and if you didn't piss yourself just yet, just by witnessing that, I gotta say you yeah, have balls of steel. What makes him even more cold and badass is his actions, immortality, and of course the fact that he is killing Nazis. This monster is the most powerful vampire in the Helsing organization. One of his most deadly flaws is that he underestimates his opponents. Not out of pride, oh no, but out of boredom. This guy is so damn overpowered and broken, his opponents bore him to death. His abilities are just insane and godlike. Coming in at number 2 is Banana Fish. Personally, I haven't watched the show myself yet. However, I know from my friends that it actually is a great show that deserves all the publicity it got. Especially among girls, Ash became one of the coolest and most beautiful badass anime guys. Even the intro song is so iconic you can immediately know which anime it's about. Ash is the main character of the show and his personality is much less graceful than his looks. He's known for sporting a snarky attitude, recklessness, and seemingly cold ability to kill without a care in the world, landing his fair share of enemies. After all, he is a mafia leader that has his own gang and was raised by none other than Papa Dino. And number one goes to Vindland Saga. Witnessing the death of your role model right in front of you as a child isn't an easy thing, especially when that role model is your father. As a child, he used to dream of Vinland, a land beyond the wide ocean, warm and fertile, rich in every way imaginable. Since that day, however, all he has ever thought of growing up was killing the bastard that killed his father and ruined his life and his mother's life forever. Thorfinn now has to train as hard as he can if he ever wishes to reach the level of the elite swordsman Ascalot. One problem, however, he starts to see Ascalot as a fatherly figure. Yeah, that happened. The manga events are truly dope though, and trust me, this is one Viking adventure you do not want to miss. Personally, I prefer the Vikings live action series, however this one is a good alternative and was quite fun to watch as well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I had fun making it for you. I would appreciate it if you guys would smash that like button, subscribe, comment, and press on the bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos and upcoming projects. And if you have any cool ideas for our any upcoming videos, don't be shy. Share them in the comments with us down below. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.